I'm honored to be here as we're honoring Lenore. I was born in Lenore. West Virginia, uh, well, North Carolina. I did wrong. Well, that's a well, and I wanted to say that I have this on a shrine, an altar oh. on my desk, um, and it's a beautiful thing. Um, congratulations to you guys, and, and I've been feeling the love for this book, I think especially from Kat. Um, and it's when it. a publisher like does a, publishes a book really lovingly, the readers can feel it. And I like to think that Lenore, who's sitting right here mm -hmm. at the Berkeley Tribal Stop, Which there is Wavy Gravy. <laughs> there she is. Oh, okay. I like to think that she can feel the love. So anyway, um, I didn't bring it with me because it's on my altar and it's not going anywhere. Uh, and so as you heard, Ruth Weiss hooked me up with Lenore. I guess she convinced her that I was legit or maybe semi-legit. And a funny thing happened when I was interviewing um, the writers and the women poets for Women of the Beat Generation. Everybody wanted to talk about Lenore. Diane DePrima wanted to talk about Lenore. Uh, Janine Palmi Vega. Um, and, and so I got so many anecdotes about Lenore that I do want to read a little bit and also my precious um, interview with her. Um, and when you were talking before about the magical quality, I actually called Lenore the word alchemist. Indeed, there's a magical quality and genius to her. So this is one of the little tidbits from DDP, Diane De Prima. I remember being met at the airport by the most downtrodden pickup truck I'd ever seen, driven by Lenore Candell, whilst a digger moppet, age about two, stood beside her in the cab, naked from the waist down and chewing on a hot dog, horrific to my macrobiotic mind at the time. Miscellaneous mutts, mostly canine, shared the back of the truck with us as we drove into town. My infant refused to stop screaming. And then I wanted to read a little bit about um, Lenore, especially the fact that she got banned. You know, I, I remember thinking, you know, because people always talk about Howl and that whole thing, you know, that went down with um, Allen Ginsberg at City Lights and Lawrence Ferlinghetti, and I was always tell people, hey, there was another banned book. It was just a biggest deal. And uh, I thought Lenore was just so badass, like, for having published that book that um, got a police raid on a bookstore. Hopefully we'll get raided tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Bold and beautiful, Lenore Candell's poetry attempts to bridge the chasm between the sacred and the sexual, between religion and the eroticism of the body. Replete with tantric symbolism, her work reflects her Buddhist Buddha's here too, influence, as well as the celebration of the corpor corporeal. Born in New York City in 1932, Lenore moved with her family the same year to L.A. when her father, the novelist A. Van Kandel, got a movie deal for his novel City and Conquest, a minor classic the film starred Jimmy Cagney. By the age of 12, Lenore had decided to become a Buddhist. I'm sorry, how cool is that? And she started writing. Um, she spent the next 15 years going to school and reading voraciously everything I could get my hands on, she told me, particularly about world religions. In 1959, she began sitting in New York and had three short poetry collections published. 1960, she moved to San Francisco, met B. poet Lou Welch at East West House, a co-op started by Gary Snyder and the Zen students. Lou Welch was on the scene in the early part of the San Francisco Renaissance, the collection of schools in the Bay Area pulled together by Robert Duncan in efforts to create community after the fall of Black Mountain College. And I think there's probably at least 25 books down there for sale that can tell you all the history of the Beats and all of that. Lou was intertwined in the mesh of the Beat and Black Mountain College scene, but he refused to align with any one school of poetry. He was friends with Jack Kerouac, Lawrence Ferlinghetti, and fellow Buddhist Gary, Scott, Gary Snyder. Lenore recalls how she ended up in San Francisco. I'd been meaning to come, and I decided to come here for a weekend, and I just ended up staying. I met Lou and all the people in that whole trip, and when Jack came into town, we all went to Big Sur. Of course, a novel came out of that. During these forays, she met other women, such as Carolyn Cassidy, Joanne Kiger, but her closest friend was Diane De Prima, whom she met when they were both joined the political group, The Diggers. I knew the beat men a lot better, was better friends with the guys, she said. They took my poetry seriously, as well they should. She lived at the East West House and studied with 
um, Suzuki Roshi. She was an omnivorous reader, reader and her library, if you ever went to her house, like, well, it was basically she lived in a library. <laughs> Lenore was very familiar with Kerouac's work, as in she was especially fond of On the Road. She liked his poetic style, and he piqued her interest, and she piqued his. Um, and he actually inspired her own work, which was surprising to me. I never would have known that if she didn't tell me. He, too, was impressed by her intensity and her intellect. And, of course, he called her like the Mae West big beauty, I mean big beauty with purple eyes and a Zen student. And she knows everything. That's the words of Jack Kerouac, and she did. And actually, Carolyn Cassidy called her a fertility goddess and off the road. Like many other beats, her work provoked controversy. The Love Book, her most notorious collection of what she called holy erotica, was sent shockwaves throughout the Bay Area when it was published in 1965. There were police raids on City Lights Bookstore for her book, as well as the psychedelic shop. I like that her books are sold at head shops. That pleases me. You've got to make sure you get it for sale on that shop, guys. We can hook you up. Um, when challenged in court, Lenore defended it as a 23-year search for an appropriate way to worship. I just want that to sink in. And she said that her, uh, she also wanted to express her belief that sexual acts between loving people are religious acts. Although Lenore was incapacitated since 1970 in a motorcycle accident with her then husband, Hells Angel William Fritz, she read voraciously uh, even more when she was ill and also wrote daily. And she said to me, it's important to be a speaker of truth, especially if you put your words out of there. Out there, they gotta be true. Kenneth Rexroth once praised the fluidity and striking austerity of her <coughs> words, which he said was delineating the sharp paradoxes of body and soul. Disregarding convention, she delves into the essence of being, writing provocative poems that intend to stir the heart as well as the mind. Her strong Buddhist influences mold intention into stanzas, giving shape to the ineffable. So now I want to read one of the ones that got her shut down, got the police raid. Um, small prayer for falling angels. Too many of my, wait a second, did we already hear the junkies one? Yes, yes, yes. we did. Okay, we'll go deeper. Uh, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> God love poem. There are no ways of love but beautiful. I love you, all of them. I love you. Your cock in my hand stirs like a bird in my fingers as you swell and grow hard in my hand, forcing my fingers open with your rigid strength. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. You are a hundred times beautiful. I stroke you with my hands, my loving hands, pink nailed being fingers. I caress you. I adore you. My fingertips, my palms, your cock rises and throbs in my hands. A revelation as Aphrodite knew it. There was a time when gods were pure. I can recall nights among the honeysuckle, our juices sweeter than honey. There was the temple, and the god entered. I am naked against you, and I put my mouth on you slowly. I'm longing to kiss you, and my tongue makes worship to you. You are beautiful. Your body moves to me, flesh to flesh skin sliding over golden skin, as mine to yours, my mouth, my tongue, my hands, my belly, my legs, against your mouth, your love, sliding, sliding, unbearably. Your face above me is the face of all gods and beautiful demons, your eyes, love, touches love. The temple and the God are one. Thank you, Lord. Oh.